Okay, good morning once again. Welcome to class. Um, we've been uh, we've been going through um, uh, a new portion of our of our lessons, and we were looking. We started looking at elements of a healthy marriage, and we started off with uh, talking about communication the last time. And uh, uh, yeah, so maybe uh, you know, would someone like to quickly? unmute and uh, a quick recap of what we did last week quickly in 30 seconds if anyone would like to quickly unmute and uh, just a quick recap yes inviting some students to do do so Yes, maybe I'd like to hear somebody we haven't heard in such a in a long time. Uh, Dinesh, would you like to attempt? I suppose you were there last class. Would you like to attempt as to a quick Sorry, recap? Ma'am, I missed the last class. You you, you were not there. Okay, yeah, all right. Mm -hmm. No problem. No problem. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, Mangi? Yes, Pastor. Were you there last week? Were you there last week? Would you like to give us a recap of what we did last week? Yes, I was, Pastor. Yeah. Um, last week we looked at. Uh... Oh, we have quite a lot. Okay. Last week we, we, we started uh, looking at the responsibilities of. of uh, husband and wife, and he said that the wife and husband are all co-equal, except the mm -hmm. responsibility that God has given us is different. Then we we went to look into the characteristic of, of love and what love is and what love is not. And then we went to to Timothy, first Timothy, and we looked how uh, we spoke about uh, sex in marriage and how sex is is, is given to enjoy for husband and wife for and then we want to to see how to to build characteristic of building the strong strong uh marriage and what's needed the communication and how to resolve issues and and building trust between husband and wife and how uh trust takes time to build it's not something that comes easily thank you Pastor. thank you thank you so much Maggie. that was that was wonderful Thanks. So I hope uh, you all were able to take some time to do the, um, you know, the previous chapter we were, we did on love languages. I hope you took that time to do that uh, questionnaire. Uh, did anybody, anybody take the time to do that and um, found out something new about yourself as, as well as your spouse? Okay, if you haven't, I encourage you to do it. It's uh, it'll be an eye opener for you. Okay. All right. Okay. I think before we get started, I do also want to mention that uh, your first assessment will be put up by the end of this week, and um, uh, you will need to complete the assessment. And marks of this assessment will go towards your final grade. So uh, ensure that you keep an eye on 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 the classroom. You'll also get a mail saying that I have posted an an assessment. So please do ensure that you complete the assessment. There will be a time limit for it, which will be given on the assessment itself. You will have a good number of days to complete it, but please ensure that it it gets done, and uh, uh, because this counts towards your final final marking scheme. And the chapters that we've done so far, that is chapters one up unto chapter five is what the first portion that we worked on, not the current chapter that we're doing, not the chapter on communication, but chapters one to five is what uh, you will be having for your assessment. Okay, so please go back, read, um, go through what we have uh, done. If you've attended class, it, 
it should be fairly easy for you to uh, crack it. Uh, but please ensure that you do the assessment because it will uh, impact your final grade. And if you're if you're doing your your next year, that will impact your entry into that as well. So please do ensure that you do the assessment on time um, and uh, definitely definitely uh, with going through your, your lessons, OK? All right, we're going to um, uh, proceed on with what we had started off with. We, had, we were looking at communication last week. <coughs> we initially spoke about the different levels of communication. Then we, we focused on um, the three important elements in communication, which is trust, time, and transparency. We started looking at uh, what are some of the benefits that uh, uh, that that communication brings to within within a marriage we were beginning to look at the elements of com communication we started off with listening and we we you know that's why we are wrapped up we looked up of how there are uh, you know in scripture it does um, encourage us to um, to really work on the way that we listen on being able to um, um, being quick to listen Okay, and some of the um, aspects that we we looked into was how uh, we could be attentive as we listen. We need to be open. We need to be patient. We need to be um, responsive and being sensitive to the emotions, the feelings of the other person. We also were, uh, you know, we um, through the comments we also were talking about how. Um, uh, listening also comes through observing our body, uh, observing the body language, and uh, the the basic goal in listening is to ensure that we understand what the person is saying and not um, figure out an answer as we are listening. Okay, uh, I hope you also took time to look to do the listening questionnaire. Um, it really gives you uh, an understanding of how um, well you use the years that God has given you, OK? So if you haven't done that, you know, go back and do it. And each of those um, items that you see over there is something that you can work on for yourself, OK? So we're going to be looking at the next uh, element of communication, which is to express, which is expressions, or which is how is it that we um, speak or how is it that we express ourselves now before I get into expression I just want to add um, a small element that usually comes in between listening and expression okay um, so when you're listening to somebody um, a good listener always tries to give a feedback of what they have heard um, so let's say your spouse is saying something to you. Before you express or you respond or you speak, it's a good practice to give a feedback of what you have heard. Now, because we're using uh, a medium like language or words, and um, very often it gets misinterpreted or misconstrued when it you know, when it moves from one person to another. And we may be very selective in what we hear or what we what we listen to. And we respond out of our understanding of what we have heard. So what does a feedback do? Is you respond accordingly to the understanding that the other person is trying to communicate to you. So when you give a feedback, you're communicating, hey, this is what I have understood you saying, is that in line with what you were trying to articulate? OK, so as a good practice, um, I think it's important when you are talking to somebody uh, and, and you, you know, you could do this uh, with, with anyone. I mean, it could be with your children. It could be with your spouse. It could be with your colleagues or whoever you're working with. When someone's saying something to you, and especially when they are emotionally laden um, um, content, it is good to to give a feedback about what you heard, all right? Because then you know you're in track with the person who is communicating to you. So 
in between this listening and expression comes this feedback, which is a very good practice um, in building a good communication. Okay, so now coming to an expression of how do we, uh, uh, how is it that we we express or, or what are some things that we keep in mind as we speak or as we respond. So a good communication needs both. You know, you need to listen as well as you need to respond. And uh, uh, the, sometimes we, we notice uh, how is the feedback different from a response. Okay, so a feedback, uh, okay, the response is, okay, now when someone is saying something like, for example, I'm saying, I'm, I'm telling uh, somebody, hey, you know, last, last night, um, uh, you know, you really, um, I'm trying to get a situation, okay, last night when you, when you came back, you, you know, you didn't, um, you didn't acknowledge me at all. Or, you know, you just went, uh, no, last night when, when you came, you just went straight to bed. Okay, so that's what I have said. Now, a feedback would be, in, in some words, a repeating what the other person has said. So, uh, so the feedback would something, okay, what I hear you saying is that when I came back last night, uh, you felt bad that I didn't acknowledge you. So this is not exactly what you heard, but this is the way that you understood it. Okay. So when you give a feedback such as that, the person will say, yeah, that's right. You got that right. You know, I felt unacknowledged when you came. And the response is going to be, I, it's either your explanation or it's your apology or it's your justification, whatever. So feedback is different from response. I hope that um answer got that uh, the the scenario got it clear charles i hope you understood that or is there is there any additional thing you'd like me to yeah okay all right so so th so what we mean by feedback is you are probably repeating or paraphrasing the content someone has given you and also picking up the emotion that they have they have articulated so that you feel you've understood what they're trying to say okay because or uh, let me give you maybe my feedback is probably wrong so uh, i may be saying hey you know what i heard you say that when i came back yesterday last night you know you were worried that i was so late into the night okay mm -hmm. so then that that may be a different i i probably didn't think of it that's it hey I, i'd say no no that's not it it wasn't that i was worried it was that you know i i just feel you didn't acknowledge me so when you give a feedback you you actually help to let the other person know what is on your mind so you give you're able to even correct it when you get a feedback you're able to correct it and as a result the communication becomes a lot more healthier Okay, so in expression, um, so as we're coming back to expression, sometimes the way that we express, we there are very different ways that we can express. Um, in, you know, each of you can probably think of the way that you tend to respond to uh, to somebody's question. Okay, you could either respond in the respond or express it in a, in a way just to state certain facts. Okay, you're just giving some objective information or certain facts uh, of, of the content of the communication. Whereas some, uh, when you express, there's a lot more emotions that are brought into it. There are a lot more of feelings that come by in, in what they may be saying or what they may be doing. So let me bring, bring again an example. So when you're talking, um, so I'll get back the same example, okay? Uh, that you know the the quest the the content is that the person uh, that okay maybe it's the wife telling the husband you know I uh, you came back really late yesterday and I was really upset okay so the person who talks with you know giving facts is say hey you know there was a lot of traffic on the way um, you know I got late my boss gave me you know ten things to do before I came so it's a lot more of factual information that is that's been expressed okay so that's where you state facts you're very objective in the way that you respond okay maybe for someone who's emotional may respond differently they may say things like oh I'm uh, I'm I'm really sorry I didn't think that this would concern you um, but you know I was steeped up in so much 
of work. I was quite anxious to finish everything. There were there were ten things to do, and there was uh, there was a lot of traffic, and I was really tired and I was bogged down. and And I, you know, I I think I just missed looking at you. Would you? you know would you uh, i'm i'm sorry that i didn't see how bad you were feeling about it so you see the differences in the way that we may respond some may be very uh, cognitive in the way that they respond some may be very emotional in the way that they respond okay or sometimes in our responses we could be um, the way that we respond could be quite aggressive like for example uh, you know the husband could probably say something like what what do you mean you know i didn't look at you so that's that's could be a a very harsh kind of an aggressive uh, a kind of a tone okay or some may be more soft soft spoken say oh darling oh you're so sensitive you know come here let me give you a hug so you know the way that we respond could be very very difficult uh, very different and and so what happens is it could be uh, through because we are we we follow a certain way of expression it may be hard to really understand what may be going on within within us okay so uh there there may not be you know there are helpful ways of responding of course but it is important to understand that there are differences in the way that we express things and a lot of times the way that we express also goes back to the way that we have seen people expressing things around us right maybe in our homes in our parental homes the way that uh, uh, things have been expressed right when there is a question asked does it come back with a question or does it come back with an answer or does it come back with silence so there are different ways that people may express however um when we look at scripture and uh, good ways of how we communicate there is a lot that scripture talks about how we express and we will we will just look at a few things over here as we consider the scripture that we see in Ephesians 4 29 to 32 i'm on page um 76 i'd like somebody to read that please Ephesians 4 29 to 32 anybody anyone Ephesians <laughs> Yes, 429 32 do not use harmful words but only helpful words the kind that build up and provide what is needed so that what you say will do good to those who hear you and do not make god's holy spirit sad for the spirit is god's mark of ownership on you a guarantee that the day will come when god will set you free get rid of all bitterness passion and anger no more shouting or insults no more hateful feelings of any sort instead be kind and tender hearted to one another and forgive one another as god has forgiven you through christ amen thank you charles thank you so much so if you look at <clears throat> the scripture it gives you principles of how when when we express or when we when we articulate when we speak what should should be take care of um verse 29 it talks of not using harmful words so harmful words um can be anything from insults obscenity to things that probably bring about hate or hurt okay uh, it says only helpful words and that which builds up so when we speak what we are gauging to see is what if whether i if what i'm saying is encouraging and building the other person up and provide what is needed so we only say what is needed and not gather things from here and there to make it more flurry or to make it more um fuller but just being able to express for what the need is at that point and to be able to stay at the here and now to be able to stay at the current situation that the conversation is bringing okay um so that when you speak it is also good to those who hear you so in a conversation 
your good a good question to ask is if you're speaking or expressing well is is it pleasant to the ears of the one who's hearing me okay have i spoken well or have i uh, responded in a way that that is good for the person who has heard me okay it also talks about um no, no shouts no insults and no um hateful feelings at all so these are some of the principle that we do uh, we do need to keep in mind scripture talks of how we align the way that we speak onto the standards of what god's word talks about okay uh as an exercise again there is there is a small uh, uh there are a few uh like like few, certain items like a questionnaire that you can do to help to see how do you speak to your uh, spouse what are some of the things that you may need to take care of sometimes we may use sarcasm sometimes we may use um uh you know we we beat around the bush or we do not we do not uh, focus on the point that needs to be discussed so the way that we express ourselves is also very important in building that communication okay all right now if you if you are to look at uh, page um 77 and 70 eight there are many proverbs uh that's that is their own communication okay um and it talks of how the uh, our words or the things that we say impact and influence the other influence the other person and as well as influence us so uh, you know maybe as homework or something that you know you can do together uh, with with your spouse is to look through the scripture and really find out where is it that is um Uh, you know it is not in alignment with what scripture talks about and how really can you begin to apply this in your marriage and apply this in your family so take up a couple of scripture and and do this and it can be extremely enriching as you um as you work on this together because this is straight from god's word teaching you how you can well express yourself how you can be uh, one who listens well who who understands um each other okay so take time to do that we'll move on to the uh, any any questions uh, here else we will we will move forward <clears throat> okay so we're going to uh, have uh, look at two just two more portions of uh, in communication is one is uh, what is it that causes uh, problems in communication that's one we're going to look at and we are going to be also looking at a law the spiritual law of communication okay now this is a time for some some candid talk okay um how how what has been your experience on uh, on having trouble communicating with with somebody i mean needn't only be your spouse but where is it that you have seen that you may tend to shut down and not communicate in a relationship what are some factors that uh, you see contributes to a barrier or a breakdown in communication i'm sure i mean we all communicate on a daily basis right and i'm sure some of us have not communicated because uh we we felt something yes charles go ahead please thank you um one of the area where i find that i have to keep quiet and shut down is when um i have identified something that is not good and when i express it and it requires for my spouse to say sorry she will not respond well and mm-hmm. what i do i oh. keep quiet okay <laughs> all right okay okay that's good thank you thank you charles okay i think anita has written where people are not open to another's perspective okay when you feel someone else does not consider your opinion 
or consider your viewpoint, you tend to shut down, okay? Sam, you've said when it comes to saying that I'm hurt or disappointed, okay? Um, uh, uh, so, so you're saying that if, if you needed to uh, communicate to her that you're hurt or disappointed you would you would rather shut down I think that's what I think it meant I suppose so okay yeah okay and Prabhaka you said if the person is ignorant we tend to stop speaking okay all right so uh, and, and I'm sure there are there are many many more examples that each of us can come up with let's say if you have someone who's silent you're talking and there isn't anyone responding on the other other end you're you're talking to a wall you may tend to shut down yes or at points of time when you feel criticized you're saying something and uh, um, you know there is there is criticism or there's a judgment that's coming yes when you when you are not getting attention from the other you're trying to talk and you know they aren't paying attention then communication gets shut down okay when you're probably expressing your emotions and they dismiss your emotions right they say why are you crying or what's the need for you to be angry or why are you making a big fuss of this um you know then it you tend to break down in communication yeah great wonderful okay so before we get there and how is it that we can uh, what is it that we should attempt to do is understand that um the fact that intimacy builds is through communication you you would understand that you become closer to someone when you're able to communicate your deepest thoughts, your th your ideas, your feelings, your um, vulnerability. When you're able to express that is when there is a, a intimacy that seems to be built. Okay, and what happens is when when we we listed a, a lot of uh, uh, causes uh, which which breaks communi communication so if those things were to happen what tends to happen is that we rather uh, you know we we kind of feel that it's better to put a wall okay or wall ourselves so that uh, you know we don't feel hurt and we tend to withdraw and then we, we tend to isolate from them and as a result communication begins to diminish and that can be a troublesome troublesome place all right so knowing that there are these certain causes or conditions that may cause us to break down communication we what we need to do is not let it lie not let it leave it at that but be to be able to address it because if we let it be then as i said it turns to uh, a withdrawal it uh, turns to an isolation and then there becomes a distance within the marriage okay i think maxin said something when i notice that she doesn't understand what i'm trying to address yet she's arguing okay yeah so that's again another uh, place where communication breaks down or even at a time when someone is so emotionally overwhelmed that they are angry and they probably um you know maybe become very aggressive or probably could be abusive or could you know shout or use um, a high-pitched volume that also can tend to uh, become like an like a communication barrier or it breaks down the communication so let's look at some of this that we have spoken about and what what and 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 i know that these situations are not easy okay because the very fact that there is a barrier or a breakdown in communication is what needs to be addressed right so maybe it has come with some situation that you wanted to address but because of the issue in the communication the the entire communication has has broken down so but you come back to address those faults or those loopholes that you see in communication so that you know the other person also does get a feedback about about why um you may be tending to shut down or the other may be tending to shut down so it is important to bring about some kind of a remedy through this so let's look at a few of them what hap what is um, i i think that that's something that's not mentioned on the table so i'd, I'd like to bring it up first is 
what do we do when someone gets extremely aggressive or abusive? Okay, um, I think the, the first and foremost remedy is when someone is angry or in, in an extremely overwhelmed emotion, um, the best thing to do is simmer down. Okay, uh, the best thing to do is call a timeout and say, hey, you know, I don't think this is going anywhere. Let's uh, come back again later when we are much more in a calmer situation. Okay, because, you know, if you've seen dogs barking, you know, one dog barks, and what does the other dog do? It barks louder. And then it keeps going on and on, right, till there is someone, uh, some uh, somebody else who throws a stone at one of them, and then they're all, they disperse. So similarly, when there is someone who's angry, uh, you do not overpower with anger, right, but, you know, simmer down. Um, uh, calm down, like like scripture says, you know, um, just just being able to keep away, you know, maintain that peace by by probably at that moment a good thing to just leave the place, ask permission, and say, hey, let's talk about this later when we are both calmer. So that's one one way to deal with it. Not getting into an argument when when things are already heated up. Okay. The next, uh, another point probably is uh, another one of these causes could be, um, you know, when when there seems to be criticism or judgment that comes about. Okay. Uh, at uh, now, all of this, all of these remedies can only be done when in a karma karma uh, time or a karma situation. Not probably at that point of time, you know. But come back and uh, um, you know come to some form of an agreement that or you know. Uh, share that you feel judged or you feel criticized when uh, certain remarks are made or certain uh, certain responses are done. So coming back and sharing that I feel this way, I feel criticized, I feel judged when uh, you know these pointers are brought out. So coming back to a place of of saying that and coming to an agreement that we will ensure we will take care that we don't. Try, uh, we we don't use those words of criticism or judgment. Okay. Uh, 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 sometimes uh, things happen when you know you fear that something will be uh, that 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 your partner or your spouse will take something that you've said in the past back again. And there again, you know, you agree to deal with the situation at the here and now. What is present? What is current? Let's look at what uh, what the issue is right now and not bring and not um, you know collect things of the past uh, into the current issue so coming to an agreement such as that uh, the third one is when there is inattentiveness or you know there is a disinterest so there again you know addressing it and letting uh, each other know that when there is a communication happen you will ensure that everything else comes to a halt and there will be more attention that's paid. Either there is a eye to eye communication, there is sitting, um, you know, um, one facing the other. So any form that shows that they are paying attention, or uh, maybe you know. So sometimes in in counseling, I you know I hear husbands saying, you know, I'm steeped at work, and that's when maybe my wife comes in and she's talking to me, and uh, she gets offended when I do tell her that I'm at work, and you know that I will I will um, discuss this later. So you know. Uh, expressing maybe maybe the so what I do encourage the husbands to say you know express to her that you know hey what you want to tell me I'm sure is important um, I am at work right now uh, can I take time at this maybe tea time four to four thirty where we can sit and discuss that would that be good for you so then you know the, some of this these remedies do help in in helping the other person who's probably very very agitated to come and discuss this um, Charles I will I will take your question in in a couple of minutes okay the other one is being too busy or not not having time to talk. So that's where you know you ensure with your with your spouse to set aside that time so that you can you can communicate. Um, the the biggest one where communication breaks down is when there is suppression of feelings. When you're not when when your feelings are dismissed or when um, you're not 
you dis decide that you know that it is not okay uh, to to share your feelings because the other person will not understand now this requires a deeper sense of a communication of helping them see that you know like maybe what I'm feeling is real to me, it's big to me. And all I'd like you to do is probably listen, is to come to a place of being open to listening and not judging that I should or shouldn't be feeling this way. And sometimes we do it very, very um, quickly or, or very flippantly. We say, you know, what's, what's a big thing to cry? Oh, this is such a small thing. But for us to be aware that the emotions that the other person may be going through is something that is very um, strong or very important for them. And if they're able to express it, we've given them a space to, to share what they may be going through. So agreeing to be supportive through that time, willing to take that time to listen and uh, engage with those emotions, even if they may be something that is hard to, uh, to comprehend or to understand, but giving them that space to be able to do that. So of course, now these are they seem very easy when it is said in these few words, but of course it takes a lot of practice, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of intention, it takes a lot of togetherness to work through some of these uh, uh, breakdowns that, that could happen. Okay. Yes, Charles. I am. You could tell me your question, please. Pastor, it's not. It's not a question, but uh -huh. the, I wanted to to speak about in, intimacy, and mm -hmm. the uh, and how it is related to, to communication. Someone said that mm -hmm. um, when there is intimacy, uh, whispers are very very loud in a way that when your spouse is in the bedroom, you are maybe in the sitting room, you will speak with a whisper, they will hear you. But when mm -hmm. there is no communication, you are in the bed. You are both together closer, but even the, the, loud, the shouting will not be heard. It will be too faint. They will talk, I will mm -hmm. talk on top of your voices because intimacy mm -hmm. has been lost. So mm -hmm. proper communication is, is like you are removing a wall. And when you have no intimacy, there is a wall in between you. Even if you are together in the bed, you will talk as if you are talking behind a mountain. That's what I wanted to, to talk about. It wasn't a question. Thanks, Pastor. Thank you, thank you. That is that is really insightful. Yeah. So I, I think when when we look at the word intimacy, it also means becoming into one another, right? And that's what. So when we're looking at communication to build intimacy, we are looking into the other to understand more than just facts and information or data that is coming. It's a lot more things that you can't see and feel and and uh, tangibly hold with your hand, but things that come from an expression. So that's why uh, intimacy, uh, emotional intimacy is built through communicating of innermost thoughts, vulnerable feelings, vulnerable positions, needs, um, uh, things you hope for, you aspire for, all of that is what builds the, builds intimacy because you are getting into the other person. You are seeing into the other. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, we, we're going to look at the last portion of, um, of communication where we understand that even as we are talking about something as basic as communication, there is a certain law, there is a certain spiritual law of communication because everything that we say has an impact. The fact that um, someone is trying to get it. Yes, madam. Uh, I don't see. Uh, could you, Maxim? Could you kindly ask them to try once again, please? Because I haven't seen any uh, pop up. Could you please ask them to try again? Thank you, Maxim. Okay. Okay, yeah. madam. 
Okay, yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, we, we were at the spiritual law of communication. So, the, the there is a law of law, you know, that there, there is a law that um, holds everything in our space, in, in the world that we live in. So also, there is a law that holds the words that we speak. There is an impact of the words that we speak. And we need to understand, and scripture talks about the way that our words have a significance in, in our conversations. Words have a significance in our own lives and in the lives of others. So, so the words we speak connect us to the spiritual realm. Okay, so what we speak towards ourselves connects us to the spiritual realm of our own future or, or our own present. And so also when we speak to others, it connects them to their spiritual realm uh, of their present or future. So what when we look at scripture, we're going to be looking at what kind of power our words have. So if, uh, you know, a very... Uh, um, common verse that we you know we we generally say in our declaration is proverbs 18:20 20 to 21 and it says a man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth and the produce of his lips he shall be filled so you will be satisfied with what comes out of your mouth and it follows the next verse follows death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit Okay, so your words or our words when we speak has the power to bring life. It has the power to bring death. So our words are so significant that it has the ability to shape things around us. It shapes and affects our present and our future. So the words we speak needs to be life. And uh, because... It, it's like this, you know, um, we we ourselves bear the consequence of what we say. So we must ensure that we speak blessing, we speak words that encourage, that build, that bring life, okay, which, of course, are aligned to the promises of God. Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith comes from hearing the message and the message comes from preaching Christ. So faith, again, comes by hearing the word of God. So we use our words to inspire faith, to build the faith, not to destroy it. So when we speak words of faith, what we're doing is we are building the faith of those around us. It could be our spouse, it could be our children. Um, when, when, we, when we speak over their lives, you know, um, it could be, uh, I mean, I think we can speak about that in every different situation. Maybe it is to do with something that they desire to do uh, I hope the person has joined it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, something the person desires to do, it is to be able to build faith, to speak in faith over their lives. But if, if in uh, converse, if we were to speak fear or if we were to speak uh, doubt, yeah, you know, that, that's something that gets moved into them, that gets absorbed into them. So we must choose uh, to speak faith over our family, over our, over our children. Okay, Matthew 17, 20, um, Jesus said this, you know, Jesus demonstrated this. And he said that um, the faith in God is released by what we say. So it says, so Jesus said to them, uh, because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. So we release our faith through the words of our mouth. So it is necessary, it is essential for us to release our faith in God and what he will be, what he will do for our spouse and for our family. Okay, scripture does talk extensively and James brings about this as to how is it that we we need to be careful about the way that we use our tongue. And if you look at that entire uh, scripture, I'm not going to read that. You could take time to read it later. It's on page 80 in your books. It's uh, James 3, uh, two verse, verses 2 to 12. It talks about, um, you know, it gives an analogy of, of our tongues, okay, and how our tongues are like fire 
that uh, that you know it, it just just like a forest fire is built up by a very very small flame you know that's enough the the small words that we use the 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 few words that we use although it may seem small it may seem insignificant it may just come up for a second but that's something that can steer um our lives you know just like it gives again two analogies two examples just like how the bit that you give a horse controls controls the horse or the um rudder of a ship you know rudder in a ship is something that can steer the entire ship into different directions so similarly even the words that we speak as small and insignificant they are can uh, blaze uh, a trail of things right so we are uh, james in his uh, you know in 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 that in that entire portion he he encourages he exhorts us to to tame our tongues to have a good tongue that is to to he inspires us to ensure that we use god's word um you know it it says um in verse uh, 10 it says words of thanksgiving and cursing pour out from the same mouth and says my friends this should not happen so it 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 is not right for um for for our tongues to be used to praise the lord as and at the same time used to curse another who is made in the likeness of god i mean james says this should not be it should not happen okay so we 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 need to ensure that we keep uh, a care a, a, a way to tame our tongues and that of course is got by the power of the holy spirit you know in uh that there are so many times uh, i think e- even through the sessions that we you know that i do have for for counseling is um even among believers just being able to tame and to, even though they've had a salvation experience understand scripture uh, to to come to that point of having their tongues uh, edified and sanctified okay so uh, it it is not appropriate it is not right for a, for for us as believers to have to speak words of curses or words of death over over another and we come to god we you know if that's a place of struggle for some of us bring it to the lord and ask the lord to sanctify you and and to change you and to renew that area of yours you know by one of course by coming back to scripture meditating on what scripture says and putting it in into practice through the power of the holy spirit okay other laws of uh, uh, of of communication is um if you would see you know in the new testament in the old testament um uh, moses had uh, had instituted to the to the priests that they should be pronouncing blessings over the people okay he and and if you look in number 622 to 27 uh, this is it's usually sung also in song right it's a song of blessing where uh, it's a principle you use to speak blessing over people over 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 your spouse over your children over over things around you and declaring that those blessings of god and the promises of god because as scripture talks of you know he will protect his word he will watch over his word to accomplish it so speaking blessing over your spouse and your children your marriage your home your uh, your church uh, is is another law that we need to remind ourselves also just like we 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 do this we also need to use the spoken word to uh um you know as a weapon against the enemy ephesians 6:17 says take on the sword of the spirit which is the word of god so when we yield to the word of god we use this against the enemy as we speak god's word we even we see this even when the lord was tempted he used the word of god he said it is written and we must develop that similar discipline of using god's word to fight the enemy okay so these principles that we have learned you know we 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 can take this over our marriages over our relationships and uh, 
uh, understand that whatever we speak, whatever we say, okay, they're not just uh, natural skills or good manners that we do, but we recognize that our words have impact. It has influence over over the people who are with us. So uh, the law that we need to understand is, you know, we need to be stewards of what we speak because our words uh, uh, bring about a lot more um, of, of things than, than we can even ask and imagine. So let's speak in line with God's word um, and do what God's word says and use our words correctly to bless and to um, help those uh, in our influence. Okay. Um, I, I completed this, this chapter here. Is there anyone who would like to ask any question, any remarks, anything at all? Okay, if, uh, if we don't have any questions, then we'll have a, a break and we shall get back uh, into class uh, in, in a few minutes.